our goals. Um, we're really happy uh, to have this mini conference today. Uh, there's interesting actually to know that the, uh, it's not only new new building or half of the building we bought, but this is also actual 20 years anniversary of creation of Thomas Institute. It was created in 2003 with an idea that it would be officially launched in 2005, which was 200 anniversary of Hamilton's Paris, and it was launched in 2005. But for me, it started in 2006. So 20th anniversary, new building, so speakers, we have four speakers today. First one is uh, our old science visiting professor uh, from University of Geneva, Arthur Alexander. Uh, please. I forgot the title, but yeah. it's not a no, 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 no worries. That's that's a good standard way to introduce. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to speak in this new building called the Hamilton Institute. And in this magnificent lecture room, you'll see that uh, I'll be able to correctly manage the words. Seth has already said that, well, it's the first test for the speaker. Uh, I want to start with this one, if you don't mind. So the title is Italian Kutriski and Modular Flat Connections. And this is uh, joined with uh, Lauren Neff, who is here, and Umran and Pablo Severa. And, you know, I uh, like to start talks with those uh, schemes. So let me, let me, so it will be uh, um, interaction between uh, three fields, which will be represented in different proportions. There will be a little bit of physics, more of the topology and uh, somewhat of geometry. And um, so they, they come in um, two species, which are called easy and hard, and easy and hard, these are technical terms. So it, it does, does, does mean that easy is supposed to be easy, maybe not. Right, so in uh, 2D topology, we'll be interested in intersections and self-intersections of curves on two-dimensional manifolds. And intersections of curves are supposed to be easy. And self-intersections, so that's why I needed the color chart. So self-intersections are supposed to be hard. So in geometry, uh, actually, uh, right, those columns, they're supposed to be all counterparts of each other. So uh, the counterpart of intersections in geometry, these are Poisson brackets for symplectic structures. And uh, the counterpart of hard in geometry is this, uh, those BV structures. I will say a bit more of what it is. And uh, in physics, the counterpart of easier, that's supposed to be chern Simons. And to be honest, I don't really know what is the physics counterpart of hard. And actually, in the talk, there will be some number of questions. So there is some, some kind of picture, but it's not entirely satisfactory. So maybe the audience can compliment and say something about it. Okay. But, but that's roughly the plan of the talk. So, and we'll start in uh, uh, 2D topology. Let's, uh, let, let, let me, let me naively think it's classical yeah. because uh, I'm talking here in, you know, on the geometric side yeah. about uh, Poisson and symplectic structures. So, of course, maybe maybe here, if one finds out what uh, what this thing is, maybe it's natural to ask what was going to be the quantization and what would be the consequences. But maybe first, even classical models. And Jens Simons is on two, two multiple time circles, right? 
Yeah, it will go on too many four times. So if you if you want to make direct contact to what's going on there. Right. So of course, as I say, you it was a little bit provocative with this easy and hard, and I heard that you you took a bait, right? So but um, right, so um So what about this two key topology story? Um, well, so we start with sigma and oriented to manifold, and usually we will see why uh, we're going to assume that the boundary is non empty, so there is a piece of the boundary. And uh, so let's think we associate. Okay, might be R or C or whatever you want, some uh, uh, base field. So we associate uh, a vector space spanned by homotopy classes of oriented loops or the maps from this one to sigma. Like this. Uh, so, and this space carries lots of structures. So, the first structure, I probably many of you have seen it, or if not, here it is. So, this is the so called Goldman bracket. So, um, I will not be very precise with my notation. I'm thinking of alpha and beta both as classes and as concrete curves. And I use kind of the presentation that fits me better in each particular instance. And this is the sum of my intersection for alpha and beta. And I assume that I've chosen the representatives with a finite number of transverse intersections. Where here there is a sign which corresponds to the orientation. And here there is the following. Funny thing. So let's suppose the, those were my curves. So this was the intersection point P. So let's say this was alpha and this was beta. And we, how it's called, resolve this self intersection or this intersection into this picture. Then out of two curves, we get one. And that's that's that one curve. Right. So amazingly, this is a Lie bracket. It's well defined. It doesn't depend on the choice of representatives in homotopy classes. And in principle, this is an interesting and simple exercise to check that indeed it verifies those properties. As you see, it's completely in terms of pictures, the orientation of the surface and intersections. Now, maybe one small well, There is a trivial curve, right? The curve which doesn't wind around anything, and it is in the center of this gadget. Uh, why is it the case? Well, you can imagine, right? So suppose you have a picture like this, then of course you can move it, off the other curve, and there will be no intersections points. And then there is no intersection points in the sum, there are no terms, and the right hand side is zero. So, um, um, however, there is a lot more structure, and uh, there is a gadget called. Uh, drive core bracket. This is somewhat similar to what we have here. Now, this is an operation which sends one loop into two loops in a schematic fashion. It is two core bracket, not, not a product. Co oh, product sorry. Core bracket. Co bracket. Yeah, my, my fault. Uh, so, and the formula is very similar. So uh, here, let me use, again, a somewhat provocative notation. So P are self-intersections 
Of course, alpha intersection with alpha doesn't make sense, but these are self transverse self intersections of that curve with itself. Here again, we will be assigned. And now the same, the very same operation will be splitting one curve into two curves. And we take a batch product of them. So this formula looks very similar to the previous one. Uh, this formula is uh, due to Turaev. And the only thing is, unfortunately, as I stated it now, it's wrong. It doesn't make sense. So uh, do you know why it doesn't make sense? So um, the problem is as follows. Suppose I have a very small loop, right? Uh, this is really the same as this in homotopy. However, here there is an extra intersection point, and this extra intersection point would give uh, a non-trivial contribution here. So for this reason, this formula simply, right here I said, the uh, uh, golden bracket is well defined. So try a bracket stated like this is not well defined. And here there are two ways out. One way out is to wash it by, the, by this central element, right? So then this small loop will become zero and it's okay again. Uh, another way that, which is probably better for us today is to choose a framing. Framing meaning the trivialization of the tangent bundle of the surface. And this is possible because uh, the boundary is non-empty. So then it's always possible to choose a framing. So then um, this delta will depend on the framing and we'll see it in the end. But for now, let's, let's ignore this problem. Let's uh, let's leave as if this were a well-defined co-bracket. So in the end, we have to do either this or that. And maybe the last thing that I want to tell you about the 2D topology is an observation of uh, Chas, which says that the composition of a co-bracket and the bracket is actually equal to zero. So uh, those operations all together, together with this observation, uh, they say that this G of sigma is an, an involuntary by algebra. Whatever this means, this basically means that they satisfy some huge bunch of uh, identities. For us, it doesn't matter so much because later on I will show you a much more elegant and easier way to encode all those identities, not more or less in one phrase. Okay, so um, that was the um, first part of my picture. And um, so that's the 2D topology story. Now, are you happy with it? Uh, we can manage the other sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'll tell you. I tell you now. I plan to erase and Boy. go and go to the second line, the same place. Sorry, sorry to say, but uh, but that's the truth. The other speakers uh, made other choices. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, are we, are we happy with this uh, setup? So you see again, so these are just uh, uh, intersections of curves and south intersections of curves. Um, it's not so clear why some of them are easier or harder than the others, but um, okay. Now in geometry, let me start by recalling some standard wisdoms. So, um, right. So let's choose a group, and this will be either 
do n if we want to be closer to the Chern Simons context or GLN. For now, it doesn't matter so much. So this curly G will be its Lie algebra. <coughs> and uh, we fix an invariant scalar product. I want to comment about that the previous two blackboards had no Lie group or whatsoever. Had no Lie group, right? And now suddenly, now all of a sudden, there will be a Lie group. That's right. To but but let's, 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 let's see it till the end of the board yeah. and then comment on it. And here, perhaps, uh, let's say we can simply fix it as a metric space. So um, we'll be interested now in the moduli space of flat connections. So we already have a surface. So the surface uh, has a fundamental group. If the boundary is not empty, the fundamental group is free. So uh, we have maps to G. So this, this guy is just the product of some number of copies of G and we divide by the conjugation action. Of course here kind of, to be honest, we should say what this really means. Uh, but again, not, let's not to be too picky or too precise about the, uh, the meaning of the quotient. So um, there is a famous theorem of a T and bot. Uh, and I think they formulated in the symplectic language, but uh, I'll say that M sigma G is Poisson. So it has a canonical Poisson structure, and this Poisson structure is induced by the orientation of the surface and by the choice of this uh, uh, of this scalar product. Uh, so I will not be explaining what it is because again we will have some very relatively precise and uh, related to what we are talking about description in some minutes from now. So um, one more thing, a so-called functions. Even though, to be honest, I think uh, in physics those functions were studied for ages before Goldman, but uh, in mathematics he, he, he made this construction popular. And so this is a function on the moduli space associated to a curl. Now again, by some abuse of notation, I will be saying that I am computing a function on the representation living in home, and this is simply the trace of row of alpha. And in physics, we would say those are rows. Okay. So um, now um, let me say the following. We can now organize now. From the symmetric algebra of zero sigma. Symmetric algebra means we look at polynomials into functions on the modular space. So now we know how it, it works on generators. Now on products and sums of generators, we just extend it. So we obtain a map from this algebra to that algebra. Now, just sigma is a Lie algebra. And the symmetric algebra of the Lie algebra is automatically a Poisson algebra. So here, there is automatically a Poisson structure. So this algebra is Poisson. This algebra is Poisson by a T and bot. And uh, for those two groups, UN and GLN, the theorem of what Coleman says that G is 
person praying at? Is it different, the same G, the letters? Yeah, that's the same letter as G, right? So, so I define G on one loop. Now I extended it by multiplicativity okay. and additivity to okay. arbitrary polynomials. And now it turns out that this map is Poisson and this links, right? The two things together. I think that time, of course, this came first. Etienne Bott invented the Poisson structure, and then Goldman discovered that actually it has this beautiful description. And at least for this UN and GLN, it does not depend on N, right? And that's here we come back to Samson's question, right? So this bracket and co bracket, co bracket, forget for a moment, but the bracket does not depend on N, right? It has some universal topological description. And Goldman, about what is it now? About 40 years ago, he discovered that um, there, is, uh, there is this phenomenon that it's actually, there is something independent of N and purely topological in that construction. Is this not subjective? Or? Right, that's, uh, you know, here there is, <laughs> there is still a piece of a board, and that's what I plan to say. So, uh, there is the theorem of Ettenbrock, which says that G, let's let me put it this way. So G is subjective, but it depends a little bit. You see, I, I was somewhat vague. Uh, I said functions. So if you consider algebraic functions on M uh, sigma G, it's subjective. I think if you take some other function space, it will be dense or whatever, right? It depends on what you would uh, put here. But for algebraic functions, it is subjective for all n. So uh, incidentally, here I, I said I will not be describing for you the idea of what was no structure, but now I don't need to, because I described in terms of very beautiful pictures the uh, Lie algebra structure of G of sigma, it induces the Poisson structure on, on this space. And now I have a subjective map on, uh, on those functions. So their Poisson structure is uniquely determined by this description. Okay. So now all, all these are very beautiful standard wisdoms. And I would like to now ask the following question. So what about the interpretation of prior co bracket? So, uh, so the golden bracket, as you see it, uh, so there is really a very, very direct link between uh, to the topology and geometry. And now we can ask uh, whether something like this is known about the right co bracket. Um, let's say in the first approximation, the answer is negative. I'm gonna, so this, this, this joint work, this, uh, this three gentlemen, it's an attempt to give an interpretation, to give an answer, some answer to that question. We don't quite know whether the answer is uh, definitive, but so that's what I want to. You mean meaning of co bracket in this algebraic setup or, or, or some other setup? No, in geometry. What is, what is the geometric structure? Right here, there was a geometric structure, this pi. It is, as you see, directly related to the to the Golden bracket, right? So here we even can induce the tier board Poisson structure by using the Golden bracket, if you want. That is one possible. Okay, I mean, the starting point is the Lie group, the algebra, the home, and so you want in this setup to say what is the Golden bracket, or yes. to change the setup. Uh, both. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but it starts to remind me it's a talk of mine which we should ask questions. No, I certainly all, let's say it's uh, probably a bit related. Yeah. I, but, yeah. yeah. I missed what was the thing. 
No, no, no. No, no I, I think it was not supposed to okay. be. It is sort of private, right? <laughs> no, no, I don't know. You refer to my message that I wrote to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, right now, now what is uh, what is the answer that we came up with? So this answer has uh, um, some uh, advantages and disadvantages. But it starts with the following observation. So now we have uh, a G of sigma together with a golden bracket and derived four bracket. And as I mentioned, this is uh, an involutive A by algebra, whatever that means. So it, it means some bunch of, um, uh, of identities. But now I promise to tell you how to explain all those identities in a relatively understandable manner. So you see here in the golden story, we're looking at the symmetric algebra of G of sigma. So let's now look at the exterior algebra of G of sigma. It turns out that for every involutively by algebra, the exterior algebra is canonically something. So here, this something for the Lie algebra case, the symmetric algebra was canonically Poisson algebra. And now this guy is canonically a BV algebra. And BV algebra means the following. So there is a unique Second order odd operator called delta, which has the following properties. So delta of one is zero, delta square is zero, and now it is linked to those two structures. It is uniquely defined by those two structures in the following way. You apply it to the element of degree one, and it's given by delta of alpha. Remember that delta of alpha maps G to H to G. So it, it fits well. And then there is a somewhat more complicated formula, right? Since it's a degree two operator, it's sufficient to define it on constants, linear and quadratic elements. And there is a somewhat more painful formula which explains what it is. So this is an element of degree two. This is an element of degree three. Oh, we, can, we can also put delta if you want. So this is an element of degree three and this is an element of degree one. So it changes parity and it prescribes what it is. So, um, and then basically all those infinite number of identities, they are all encoded in the formula delta square equals zero. Right. Okay. Does one need evolution? One needs uh, the involutive. One needs the involutive property, right? That, uh, that this guy, that, that's the involutive property. Ah, so by, de by definition, that, that's, that's the name. That's maybe somewhat, uh, somewhat misleading name. So there is no involution. Involutively by algebra means this. So that's changes orientation. No, 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 no. That's that just this identity. And uh, as far as I recall, without that identity, here there will be some defect on the right hand side. So it's not going to be zero. All right. So um, that's how it works, and that's what we're going to use. Right, now let me recall one more thing. Samson was asking whether we want to be using still GLN and QN. And actually, yes, I have my question. Sure. Uh, there could have been the, another direction of going to co-product, like mm -hmm. means that you have states of functions and some group. That's right. And you can define Poisson structure. That's right. So it will not concern. 
Uh, let's come back to that question later. We, we don't know in some way. That one always exists. We can keep in mind that connection to the right of the brain for copper. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, but also the question why don't they tensor for, for symmetric and exterior algebra? Seems to be more natural because it is like what tangent bundle. Yeah, maybe it's a good suggestion. Let's yeah, let's yeah, let's yeah, also yeah, come back. Yeah. Let me state what uh, what we have, and yeah, that's uh, the the one the one that you mentioned. Would seem I probably want to understand better the one that Samson you you mentioned. We, we know about and maybe there is a connection or maybe not. Uh, right. Okay. So um, let me add on it to me. You wanted to find. In a BV start in BV setup, you wanted to find uh, the that's what kind of other way around. You, you knew that there is a BV no, we, we want to know what's the uh, what's the geometry structure of B. which corresponds to, 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 to self intersections. Oh, so right, B. so B. We, we know that two to right is self intersections, and we have some other reasons why we're interested in this pair, but uh, we want to know. What is the modular space or geometry structure which corresponds to self intersections? Okay, so let me recall the following thing. So there is a so called clear least super algebra, and um, this is the following gadget. So this is GLN to which you attach one parameter, and this parameter has two features. It's odd, and its square is one. It's somewhat counterintuitive, right? Because we are used to the fact that if there is an odd parameter, it should be Grassmann, and Grassmann epsilon square should be zero, but actually not necessarily. Ah, it's some commutative for some yeah. So then the corresponding Supergroup admits uh, a very simple description. These are just invertible elements in that ring. And um, I think it's called Kapustin algebra. Yeah. Why Kapustin? Ah, because it was uh, uh, invented it for matrix synchronization of functions is there, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's before before the most super. Ah, no, 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 just sex is one. Ah, no, because uh, okay. right, the, no, the those the the those those clear clear thing that yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't fix. yeah. they dates yeah. back, yeah. right? And uh, so there is an odd pairing. Why is it clear? Because the pairing there is an invariant pairing, invariant scalar product. And this scalar product is odd, and it works as follows. You see the Q of n, what is it? It's a sum of two copies of GLN, and on GLN we have a trace, and we just pair those two copies. And it turns out to be invariant. We consider the test algebra as an associate group. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so uh, maybe one more thing. Um, so something interesting happens on characteristic of K divisible by two. No, 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 but I mean, K is whatever, R or C, forget it, or characteristic zero. Don't, let's, let's not mention. Uh, right, so one more. Um, Interesting observation. There is a so called odd trace, an interesting odd trace function on QN, and uh, it works as follows right? An element of QN, they are all of the form A plus epsilon B, right? As elements of that ring, and we map it to the trace. Of B. So to the trace of the coefficient in front of the odd generator. So and you really want to group or no, not on the algebra? I can do it on the algebra, but I, I will use it on the group. So 
So, and this is uh, this is a conjugation. This is a conjugation in the RN term. Okay. So now we are ready to state some results. So let's consider the moduli space for that guy QN, right? We take the same surface, and now instead of GLN or UN, we take QN. And the claim is that the space is now BV, so it has a BV operator. And if time permits, I will give you some hints on how, uh, how this BV operator is constructed. And then, uh, we, know, we can now define a kind of super Goldman map. So we define Goldman functions uh, as all traces of row alpha. Okay. So then the second claim is that. The map from the exterior algebra induced by this G in the BV map. Right? So here there is a BV operator, as we discussed before. Here I claim there is a BV operator. And the BV operator will map to the BV operator. Now, maybe one more thing. Before G was mapping symmetric algebra to functions, now I claim it is mapping the exterior algebra to functions. And this is because this function is odd, right? It's clearly odd because it takes a coefficient of the odd element. So this means they, they, they must stand there from you. Okay. Um, so here is uh, so that's the uh, that's the main result that I wanted to present to you today. And now I will make some uh, comments about whatever subjectivity, about relation to physics, and maybe if time permits, a little bit about the proofs. I think it might be somewhat interesting. Usually those proofs, right? That's uh, boring, but maybe this time the proofs is uh, not so bad thing to do because I, I guess by now those statements, they tell you nothing, right? It's, 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 it's really, we really made like, several steps and the proofs, they refer to the four cross lead picture that uh, maybe some of you have seen. And so I think that for some of you that might be interesting if, if I spend at least five minutes on the proofs towards the end. Okay, but that's, uh, that's uh, that's the main result. Maybe like a couple of comments. Uh, so so Samson, you were asking how it is related to uh, uh, say maybe to write quantization. Uh, to be honest, we we, we don't know. Uh, uh, maybe uh, there is some uh, uh, duality or something, but that's a very different object, right? So we uh, we're looking now at this moduli space for this supergroup. So this moduli space, right? It has some odd part. Uh, so our structure is a BV structure. So we don't uh, we don't really know. Maybe after you connect to Jan Simons, it will become possible to, to go back and ask the same question. Sure, sure. Okay. Right. So uh, maybe one one comment on subjectivity. So we actually know that uh, this map is not subjective, but uh, we have a conjecture on how to improve that. 
so in fact, one can extend the structure to the direct sum of uh, G of sigma and the first homology. G of sigma is some awful infinite dimensional object. The first homology is, of course, a very nice object. And uh, the idea is that on this one, you should use some other gadget. So this QN has one more gadget, which is called odd determinant. So odd determinant of A plus epsilon B is given by something like something like this. So there is some interesting formula. This is also an odd function. And uh, uh, so we know that for n equal to one, so Q1, which is not neutral, but still. So we know that then subjectivity holds. Uh, we don't know whether it holds for high n, maybe, possibly. As, as, as Maxim said, like, because you consider here double of your GLM, wouldn't it be more natural to consider double of G epsilon, one in even degree, another in odd degree, and then consider the corresponding symmetric algebra? Possibly, yeah, I don't know. Someone says an interesting idea. We, we, should, we should think about it. Uh, so you have something odd and also a fun, but uh, it also when these two things come mm -hmm. together, yeah. sometimes consistency conditions require spin structure to show up and control the odd together. So question, is there any uh, reason that this does or does not happen here? Um, you, you see, okay, the, the, maybe the, the good answer is we don't know, and that's because we usually consider surfaces uh, this boundary. And the surface is this boundary, the uh, tangent bundle is trivial. So there, like, right, the spin structure would come into play, right, when you kind of, uh, when you consider closed surface. Yeah. And so, so we somehow, we may, maybe you're right, but we don't know it yet. Okay, so, uh, so then this means that in principle, if uh, this conjecture, if this extension indeed furnishes for you the subjectivity, then maybe maybe this structure can also be induced completely from that structure. But at the moment, it is uh, not known. Maybe one more thing to say, uh, as uh, Maxim pointed out correctly, right? So this thing is very different from what we were doing before. So even though it, it knows about the Goldman bracket, but in a completely different way than the moduli of GLN or UN uh, flat connections. So we know the Goldman brackets, but uh, the previous picture is not part of this picture. So, and this is certainly a negative, negative. Maybe one short comment. about physics. So let me recall this classical Chernozano story. So as Samson said, people are usually looking at the cylinder where, which is based on our surface sigma. So the Chernozano's. is this exotic gauge theory. So the early Lagrange equations imply that the curvature uh, of the connection is zero. So this means that the phase space is M sigma G and This implied form on the phase space is the inverse of the Poisson structure that we were discussing before, right? So that's that's the picture. Now, what about this case, right? Uh, 
because of the PV structure. But as far as I uh, learned from the physics literature, PV structure more like indicates for us that this is the structure on the whole space time. So probably, probably this should be some B field theory. I, I don't quite know, right? But BV structure normally that's the structure of the space of all fields. And what can it be? Maybe like the, the easiest conjecture that maybe this is some kind of BF theory based on this QN. I, I don't really know. Uh, at least um, what, what is what is not satisfactory for me that even assume it's true, it, it, the, the, those two things at the moment, they don't talk too much. And that sounds wrong, right? Because this structure, this thing should have more structure. It knows both about uh, intersections and self-intersections. But at the moment, they sort of look very different. And uh, yeah, maybe putting them together in some way would be nice, but so Maxime, you were saying, let's put them together, but how is it? This one is wants to be three-dimensional. This one wants to be more like two-dimensional. Okay, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, no, in fact, I, I, I think if we can compute and do variable sum, not loops, but passes going from boundary to boundary. So oh, that, that doesn't change much. Yeah, sure, that one can do. Yeah. Topologists know how to do. You replace your whatever. You, you have your group void, fundamental group void. That, that can be done, but I, I, I'm not sure why, why would it help in the like, dimensional issue, but maybe. Well, why can't we use this uh, super group? This group. How do you call it? Queer. Queer. So that there will be yeah. a super algebra, right? Yeah. <coughs> so that's that's the right. Why, why, why can't we use this uh, group there in everything that we to write Chern Simons instead of, oh, and I don't know, Chern Simons usually wants the even pairing. Uh, it can uh, be super group, that's fine. It's strange, uh, Chern Simons, but you'll But I think the, the, the action group have a wrong parity, something. Uh, probably, well, well you will use simultaneity of your model, but. No, no, but it doesn't pair it, you know. Pair it. So huh? it's worse. Yeah, I think it's much worse, right? The, yeah. the action should be like, at least it should a little bit it's resemble a resemble a number, not even touch. Action will be yeah. odd. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Thanks, 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 thanks. I think I think it, it's it's very good, right? I gave you a kind of uh, <laughs> some <laughs> things to think about. Let me tell you like small things about proofs. I hope some of you enjoy it. If if you never seen for crossly, maybe it's a bit steep, but so how 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 does one actually prove those things? Um, um, so let me recall how the Paul Crossley, how the Paul Crossley story was organized. So well, we have our surface and I'm not sure whether I will be able to draw it in a very convincing way. So we have a boundary and so they were choosing some kind of skeleton in the boundary, such that the surface can contract to that skeleton. And let's, for, to simplify things, they, they also had many base points, but let's say we have only one base point. Let's say that one, or maybe even any base points. So, um, So we're fixing the invariant element S in G times a G. 
So that invariant element corresponds to our uh, invariant scalar product. So this is in one to one, this B. And then um, we're writing the following by vector on the space of representations, not on the modular space, but on the space of representations itself. So this is a sum of vertices. I here chose to have only one vertex. In principle, they may have more vertices. And each vertex has a star with the half edges coming to it. So there is a sum uh, over the pairs of elements of the star. And then if uh, all my vertices are sitting in the boundary, there is a natural orientation. So I can order them. And so there is a sum over pairs. And here we write SAB. So that's an element of G and the G. And uh, to each half edge, the associate either a left or right action on one of the group elements. So this compile G is just G to some power. And each of them stands for either left or right action on G. So, um, and Fokin Rossley showed that uh, this bivector descends to the moduli space and coincides with the bivector of uh, a table. So, I think that's, that's maybe one uh, presentation of Fokin Rossley's theorem. Maybe one important thing here, we choose to interpret those elements of G times the G we interpret them as by vectors. So the first copy acts on the first function, the second copy acts on the second function. Now, what happens in the odd case? So let's do exactly the same. So I choose the same skeleton. Now I have a least super algebra, like we had. And um, again, I introduce an odd invariant element, which corresponds to the odd scale plot. Well, uh, I can write the same formula. But now I interpret those TABs as second order operators. So they act on one function, not on two. Of course, it's odd, right? Because T, is, T, T was odd. Um, and it turns out that for QN, it simply works. So this is uh, uh, this is an operator which squares to zero. And this is an operator which has all the desired properties. So simply in the four cross the formula, you substitute your new odd pairing instead of the even pairing. And you think about it differently, right? 
here you wanted one operator to act on one function and the other one on the other function. And here they both act on the same function. I would like to finish with the following remark. Uh, in this talk, I decided to focus on the situation when my Lie algebra is QN. But in principle, you can consider other odd, uh, other algebra, other these super algebras with odd theory. You don't, you don't need to choose necessarily QN. You can try to choose something else. And in that case, this formula will receive uh, a correction. And I think that's a little bit interesting, uh, this remark. So, um, so note that there is a unique element nu in G, such that C of the X is super trace of the giant X. So, so this is some, some kind of thing which uh, represents super trace of the joint X. So, and in general, one needs to add here some of the edges of gamma of the rotation number of gamma times new gamma. So the, these guys, rotation numbers that corresponds, remember, there was the choice of framing on the surface. So in general, this guy will depend on the framing on the surface, and it will depend through the rotation numbers, and you need to add some degree one operators here. Because Fock and Rossley, they proved that their bivector does not depend on change of the graph, right? So it's kind of, it's nice that there is such a combinatorial formula, but then it's a little bit cumbersome to prove that when you ch change all those graphs, you always get the same bivector. And now it turns out that in general, this proof doesn't work, it fails. And you need to correct it. And in order to correct it, you need more structure. So this correction term, it allows you to fix the proof. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good question. Um, if you could write something simpler if you write the variable coordinates, you parameterize somehow the things, and then we can recognize simply this will be something like probably. But how did you write Well, you know, those moduli spaces, you you wrote some Darbu coordinates in the SU2 case, right? But in general, Darbu coordinates for uh, for moduli spaces, that's not the easiest. Right, but in SU2 case, Darbu coordinate, does this guy look like some quadratic? You mean, you mean for Q1? Right. Some kind of quadratic. So, so we can recognize. From the simple three series uh, this, this structure, because it means I, you know I, I I have maybe a not very good way to answer your question, okay. Lauren. Not Lauren. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> three fields, everything is recognizable. Then you realize that once you understand the three fields, then this is a kind of invariant way of describing. <laughs> That's what I would say. Okay, other questions? Okay. Yeah. Move your closer. We have lots of time. Oh, yeah, I just want to see. Yeah, thank you for wearing that stuff. So, I actually have a question uh, for guys about this picture once on the report. So, in the usual case, it gives a spherical double of kind of help. So, to understand what's going on here, it's maybe a question or suggestion. It would be good to nail it down for this case. So, Cherry Link actually introduced lots of other close cousins of Daka. We may include in some, uh, or like we would need some port coordinates. Exactly. So I wonder if this can make contact with uh, his exotic uh, impulse uh, versions of spherical Yeah, that, that's a very good suggestion. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know, but certainly, sure, like these three holes here and uh, one one function torus, right? These are these are the things. Maybe maybe even the three holes here that perhaps would be. Uh, 
right? It's so supposed to be easier to start this. So the unit takes the modulated space will be zero dimensional, so it could be just odd structure for you. So it's it's maybe a little too degenerate. But yeah. this is definitely the first mm -hmm. real, real mm -hmm. example. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but 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 certainly typically, right? You blew all modular spaces from either those three fold spheres or one punch of toroid. Yeah, that's right. Other question? So what are most fields here? Oh, there is no distinction, gross to the map. But, but I think it's, it's uh, but, 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 but if, if, uh, but well, if, if I understand correctly, like, if, if, if you already have you have gross field. If, right. if you already get the PV description, right, it should include everything. Yeah. Ghost and anti fields, yeah, and that's, that's right. It's, it's, it's a question. No, no, so no objection to this. This is BB algebra, you have this little bracket at the greater. But uh, to make a little jump, you need this to be non degenerate, an odd syntactic form. Well, that I, that I don't know. But yeah, it's it it not just for the solar integrations. For, 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 for mm, no, but I mean, let's say, be conjectural, if you, take, if you look at the closed surface, the body will be simply zero or whatever. The, the, the body, uh, yeah, will. But no, 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 I mean, this. Uh, this for BB structure, it was a special uh, description with uh, identities, but um, in, in, uh, if you want to see in dramatic, it should be odd symplectic name for this word. Yeah, not, 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 but, not just plus one. Right, that's, that's not, I don't think it's guaranteed here. Yeah. That's, so that's, that's like, a negotiation enforced by, by doubling. By that, some doubling. Mm, yeah. Possibly. But here, yeah. yeah, that's that's of course one of the things. I I, I don't think it's so simplex. Mm. Probably not. Yeah. Maybe one last question I ask Antron. But in the very structure you can always define action, which is really actually a vector field you can submit for contract you with the D of S. What would be S on this things? A nice functional mistake, right? So it looks to just simply take i delta of omega and you with ds, and s is a function. But of omega that, that goes back to Maxim's question. Well, I assume that there is a universe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So this connected. That's why I want yeah, to ask this came to my mind. Mm -hmm. I have omega, I contract it, sure. I get the action. And actually, will be function on the space that you describe. Yeah, 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 but maybe, maybe then indeed the doubling of variables or something. Because in in the, in the formulas that I presented to you, uh, there is probably pi, but there is no omega. But how how is it? Isn't it also wrong that we absolutely need omega? I mean, is it? No, 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 no. no, no. Well, let's turn it, turn it the other way. Yeah. No, this idea is that the goes back to Albert Schwarz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we have all symplectic manifold this whole volume element. Mm -hmm. that? On each Lagrangian submanifold, which could have different even in our dimension, we have canonical volume form. Mm -hmm. ah, it will be also BRST, some kind of vector mm -hmm. fields, knowledge of vectors. Mm -hmm. and then we can integrate dramatically uh, the Lagrangian manifolds mm -hmm. and like pass integrals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that's 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 yes, it's really I'm very sorry. Since here. it's a discussion now, we can we can okay, finish yeah, because we have Maxim's talk in 20 minutes time and uh, 25 <laughs> minutes.